Hello, hello everybody and welcome to the LGL Officially Unofficial Broadcast Season. No, wait, this ain't a podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin and Alicia Lanzanera, we're back, boys, together. It took us till day 13 of the LGL to get together once again on the broadcast, but we're back, baby. It's the original three. It's us again. And we're, obviously, we're very, very happy. Uh, you know, this is our little baby project. We've seen so many people do some great casts for it. So happy to be back together with you two, though. It's, it's just been not been the same, has it, Initialize? It's not. It's been a while. Oh, it has been. We've had each of us individually on the broadcast, but not together for a hot minute. And um, how are you lads doing? How you doing? Well, How you feeling? I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling a bit of deja vu because it was that whole situation like when we did the, the original podcast for this year, of course, but for the yes. plug like number three already at this point. We're like two very minutes good. in, by the by. Well, we were like, we, 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 we pulled from Macbeth reference when, when will we three meet again? Apparently day yeah. 13. There we like, go. Uh, ironic, apt. We're considering we made the witch's comment as well. There, are, there is no thunder, lightning or rain. This time, though, it's actually quite sunny outside. So There are some games of League of Legends, there though. Just there are there. Are there. <laughs> Well, there are. The first one's going to be Axis facing off against Crest Gaming Act. And if Toll 2 has anything to say about it, there's going to be one thing that's for sure. And that's, and that's carries in the top lane. top laners. Yeah. Because <laughs> for, for the longest time in the LGL, uh, mm. at least for the time that we've watched it, we have lamented that there are basically zero true carry top laners. Even yeah. someone like Ebby... Place the no, no, no. Nar is the split. Yeah, Nar was his carry. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the LGL carry is a little bit of Camille and Nar. Told to is playing Draven top. He's playing Uction. He's playing Fiora. He is a very unique player in the LGL scene. But it is on Axis who are struggling as a team in general. But this is against Nap initialized. Told to versus maybe the weak side king. I think he's kind of potentially saying just king in general, actually. Maybe, at this point. Yeah, actually. When CGA have been good this year. Besides, I've got to of... cut you off, mate. We got pick and ban phase. Well. Kaito alluded to a Syndra as his favorite champion, which has been updated on the wiki by yours truly. We got to go over. Gentlemen, take it away. I love the little plug in, like, five. chose to forego the pick of the handshake, which side they wanted between the Jinx and the Aphelios. Jinx has typically been the, if you make a mistake, the game just ends at some point in, in, in the mid to late game team fights after two, three items have been hit. But you can get some very interesting mid games with something like an Aphelios and a lot of kill pressure bot lanes. Indeed. But it does give Kassen his Jinzai, which he was playing even out of meta last year when he first started the out. So I don't think he's too upset about Very that true. hybrid on the Aphelios. Feeling pretty good with that one as well. But it may be leaving us up for old Axis special. We might not have Hoglet and Pooh. Or, or, um, or it would have been... Who was running the Yumi all the time with them? Corporal was Corporal. Too, yeah, yeah. Corporal was well. I was trying to think back. Was it even Pooh way back when? But he, of course, he was on the Hawks and he was doing that. It was so. the Olaf with the big cat comp, which That's Axis right. ran in 2020. That's yep. Right, there you go. So there's a little bit of jail history to you. Either way, it won't go towards that unit. It will be the Nautilus instead. Lots of go buttons right now for Axis and a Jinx who can follow up once that initial kill is secured. And Sangchu has been their consistent carry, even if Swamp has been yep. the guy they've often been looking right, just, for. Just to start. confirm, do we have Castor Audio currently? Because I am just checking in with stuff good. Okay, cool. I was like, oh no, that's a lot of stuff which I said. <laughs> 
Okay. I just said Nap was really good and I've been really proud of him. His Akali good. from a couple cool. of weeks ago was phenomenal. And uh, that, that was my first point. No, we really, I waxed like, a bit to, we really like to give the 2020 vibes here where we're just like three dudes on an OBS trying to put out a stream. But uh, currently with the three picks, but either Saber into their second bands. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that CGA are taking away some of the easier to snowball on mid laners that can pile on with their ultimates, I think that uh, that um, that Galio is is a good ban away. Now, I if you're going to go along that line, I think you should probably ban away something like a Rise too, who also gives you really good right. priority in the early game. Um, I wonder if CJ value that pick as much as as much as I do. And again, not 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 to continue with just referencing C9 members. You mentioned Blab early, but Fudge also said something about mid lane where it's actually mm. the minute. It feels like the highest priority mid often are. Rise and Ari, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit there, but I'm sure he was memeing just a touch on top of that. But they have really been big, what pushing Rome champions, the two true remaining top tier picks that right now in League of Legends. So they're both up, and I wonder whether that ends up being the trade here. Okay, so Ooh, it's actually okay. potentially not going to be that. This is now very mid game skirmishy from the side of CGA. You have the Jinzo, you have the LeBlanc, that is very good at taking over the early game. You are currently going to be very heavily outranged actually regardless of what you pick in the mid uh and you have to play up against that hecarim so um i'm wondering now what cga wants to do to kind of round out the top the, the, the top lane pick i think you probably need just a little bit more engaged which is obviously one of nap specialties on the other side though potential engaged option coming in in the lissandra it's not going to be that's actually going to be the vex. both of those picks though still can hold up against a leblanc in lane and I love, love, love this combo. The Vex and the Hecarim is so deadly. Hecarim starts up. If Vex has got her um, passive charge to Doom and Gloom, she can basically just get the freest Shadow Surge into Fear of a Life. The th you get about four seconds See, straight of team wide quite, fear. Um, it's absolutely brutal. That doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same as like, oh, the, the, the biggest team fight all ever. It's like not quite the biggest snowball ever. Uh, I feel like Vex is just trying it, to be she's like, she She's a ghost type. That's a ghost ball. <laughs> Shadow ball. Shadow ball. That's like, oh, that ain't a Pokemon yeah, move. Sort of move. <laughs> I tried. I went, oh, yeah, okay. That was, okay. I've not played Pokemon in a while. That's, that's disappointing even to me. But we might be playing a little bit of uh, Whack a Scion on top lane if that is locked in. So the cannon has come in for Tol 2. It's another carry. This is more team fight oriented. But we know this player loves to go towards the high damage. It is, it is. going to be the Scion coming through for Nap. Now, we haven't seen the Scion in the Ascendancy in the meta for a while, but this is the Engage. It is still the 5v5. This does fit what we were uh, asking for just a little bit earlier in the draft. And now you have a significant front line uh, to contend with the Hecarim. Uh, and it's not quite Trindamir, but it is another man too angry to I die. can't believe it's not Trindamir. The yeah. new Marjorie and special from the old chain. I was going to make a rep about how Sai is too angry to die, but no, no Marjorie, Marjorie is where we end yep. up. Okay. Okay. No butter allowed here. That's not true. <laughs> Please, have butter over Marjorie. It's much better for you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave that statement as it is and say, yes, do that. But on the other time, I think maybe we should talk. This is why we've not been on cast for 13 days yep. together in the LGL. This is what it devolves into. Look at that. Look at that smile. Wait, wait until we get back there. to Kenobi references. That's when that's We that's, did spend a solid hour yesterday. This is where the, this is, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> now this is what I call podcasting, I guess. Yeah. Everybody in the sense of like well, well, pod racing on that strategy. If, if, if there's any indication by how Lexi led us into this broadcast, yeah. there we go. You know, all I'm saying is, if you're out there. Oh, Star Wars executives. Right. <laughs> if you need someone to reprise your role for podcasting or pod racing, oh, casters, wow. Could you imagine being pod racing commentator? I'm just saying, that would be, I would be the dream, dream. job. That'll be a I would dream. be a pod racing commentator. <laughs> <laughs> so would I, actually. No, that'd be pretty cool. I'd appreciate I don't know whether I've quite got the synchronized a la 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 it's required it's like... to praise Jabba the Hutt, though. <laughs> I, mean, I was trying to think if there's anyone's name I could really just like briefly mash into like, Toll to the Hutt. A la la la. <laughs> Doesn't quite work the same way. Okay, right. Um, well, I maybe mean, if they release like a giant slope champion, we can work with that. <laughs> I need to make a very rude reference about you then and decide against it. I'll leave that one alone. Unbelievable working conditions. No, that was very believable. <laughs> Let's be real. Believable, right. but so, so sad. <laughs> it's so disheartening. Okay. Let's bring it back to the game where things are not quite disheartening. They're still very much up in the air first game of the day here. As you said, mid-game skirmishing really from the side of CGA. Nap gets to play weak side on Sion, which is king of weak side tanks. You know, there was a point where the only champion you could 
even feasibly farm on in lane swaps when uh, was a Scion top, right, for the longest That's time. That's true, yeah, because you just die under the turret and then you'd be like, sweet, well, well, you die to a camp, you take them, you teleport under the turret with a yep. red buff and then and you just Q away wave and it all goes. Yeah. Um, on the other side, Axis, I actually really like their composition. I think they've got a lot of ways to start fights. I think they've got cool flank angles. I think if anybody ever clumps up your ability to fear everybody for a massive cannon ultimate to get Sanctuary rolling, it seems like a pretty smooth option for, I won't call it front to back, but I'll call it back to, well, front back to front. Yes, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's heavy dive, right? It's effectively yeah. the opposite of the front to back because let's be honest, Axis do not want to be lining guns up uh, against CJ when they have the, um, the Tom Kench, realistically. You know, I, halfway through the draft, I was thinking like, okay, maybe you can lock in something which is a bit more, you know, stable, mm. less volatile on top. So of course it's faulty, right? Mm. Uh, or something in the mid lane, and you can play just front to back for something like a Jinx Victor. Uh, they chose to go towards heavy dive double AP solo lanes. So Mercury Tread's going to be huge value out of CGA. Question is, is it going to be enough to save multiple members? Because if you have mid jungle with uh, with Merc Treads and you've got Nemo bailing one person out, which is probably going to be hybrid, let's be honest, is that going to be enough to save from a multi-man combo? That's going to be the break point in the game. So that's what we're waiting for. Look to see the leads on the big dive combos compared to the defensive options available from CGA. Absolutely. And of course, there's got to put some nameplates on as well. Axis have been struggling in recent weeks. They have not found the... The level of form once we saw out of them out of some week one two where Yeliyoshi and the like before Toll 2 came in was running smite top lane. He was running his poppy, etc. And they've kind of got a bit solved. They kind of got a bit figured well, out. The, 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 the strategy also got nerfed. Yes, Usually so objective so. bounties, the way that they work with, with multiple support items and smites on your team, etc. etc. It, it ended up um of course, just kind of getting removed from the meta. So it's access. They dug deep to try and find an angle, and that work, sadly for them, has now gone out the window. They do have Toll 2. We've talked about this player a lot, mainly because this is the most eventful thing that's happened to this team, because it feels like a, um, not necessarily a desperation move, but it feels like their hand was forced in how they wanted to play out this roster. Yeah, and, you know, we've seen talent here, but this was kind of true of people like Mega, Mega Man and stuff last year where we saw good starts, but still needed a bit of growth. And then when you've not quite got the pieces around you, mm. it doesn't always function. Of course, Axis had a pretty good 2021, all things said and done. Well, we the spring was obviously terrible. Ter they had a very rough split. They mm -hmm. tried to get things working, you just wouldn't. Uh, no, of course not. Particularly Mega Man was struggling there. But you know what? He stood up in summer, and Axis, by my reckoning, actually were the second best team at the very end of that year when they lost to DFM in that semi-finals. I think that they put up a great showing still. Uh, now this roster is much changed. You still have Megaman. Dicey was on that roster and subbed in a little bit during spring, but this is a very much changed Axis. And they're, they're yet to really find that same level of competition mm -hmm. here in the LGL. They haven't found that same kind of performance. CGA, however, They've changed some things themselves. Actually, the, most of their roster has ended up changing. It is the top two members, the top and jungle, which have stayed the same. But this is the best that they've looked probably since, I would say, summer 2021. That was back when they had Aria, of course. They ended up uh, getting into a top three berth, sadly kind of collapsing very towards that end of the split. But this is a team which uh, has occasionally reached high levels in the LGL. It's mm. sometimes been few and far between, but it's not necessarily as alien to this roster as it would be to Axis. No, of course, you know, the, the roster that comes to mind is the one with the likes of Gango and Aria on it, which did such good yeah, work. And then Swamp roster, yeah. is gonna come down for the ganking bot side and look to get first blood. Swamp continuing to be a very proactive jungler in the LGL. It is two kills over. Swamp picks up the second and Sanctu and Swamp rolling. Music to Axis yeah. fans' ears. And this is the earliest timer that you could be doing this on Hecarim, which is partly why I was like, oh, let's have story time. Let's see what happens. Because honestly, at this point, you're thinking, look, you know that the, the level four has been hit by your junglers at this point. That's when Hecarim is dangerous. When you have the ghosts, when you get to run into these lanes, you are in a lot of trouble. Dicey pulls the trigger at the correct point. It's not like you have the bow. Uh, can't save your AD carry at that point. And rudely interrupted story time does net Axis some advantages. To, to, and of course, that is a great start for Axis. It's exactly what they want. And honestly, I think playing away from Toltu at this point towards a more consistent Winter Tonight Sanctuary makes a lot of sense here. And if you can get an isolated lane up here, if you could have played that even just basically, Kennen should do just, yeah. just fine into Sion. And speaking of Sanctu, the more stable win condition in that bot side, especially due to champions, blah, blah, blah. I mean, what is it with Axis and picking up great AD carries? Yeah. These last two years, they used to have Honey, they have Sanctu now seriously premier 
AD carries. I think Sanctuary has been the bright spark for me from this Axis roster. Now they are up against Hybrid. Hybrid is now a kill down in a matchup where you do not want to fall behind the Jinx. You want to arm wrestle them in the early game and then start get a, a, getting a lot of kill pressure around that level six. But now Sanctuary has that advantage. He's back for the cult. That's actually a very LPL thing to do. Big time. Um, That's not the level two cheater back, actually. It was, yeah. Sheen was uh, filling me in on this tech. He says that a lot of teams in the LPL just end up doing this to kind of get an artificial advantage. You double dip when Ephelios has um, the point in strength at level six to like level nine before you start outranging him. But once you do back for that cult, you're still, so like, back. sweet. He's we back. get to come back. Swamp's back again. Let's see if we can dig an even bigger hole. Cue up the Shrek references. This is my swamp gank, because he'll come down here and there is no donkey around to make things a bit awkward, but maybe Cassid can be a uh, spoiler right now. Looking to turn this around, Swamp slowed down. Gravitum comes through as an auto. The dead Burnham Duskwave doing a bit of work as well, but it will be flashes out of Nemo. Nothing else to write home about right now, aside from a heal from Sanctuary. Yeah, but the reason that gang doesn't come through it, like with the, with as much power as like, you don't have the ghost, and there was an exhaust on the table too. So Nemo managing to disengage, couldn't do that on the first attempt, but more than happy to survive that. Yeah, of course, the summon is still down, and now with level six available for a Swamp, there is an onslaught of shadows available, which means the next attempt could be significantly more deadly. Though I personally feel you might want to hold on to that because you can see in the top left corner of your screens, that's a Herald timer, and it's just tick below a minute. Good heavens, look at the time. So, look at... So, it, 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 it's the, a smallish The clock. big clock. <laughs> so, the thing about um, the amount of fights we've had bot lane, it means you don't get clean rotations up towards the Herald. You can see that actually uh, Hybrid and Nemo are looking to go back towards their bot lane. They don't really want to be rotating that early, whereas Dicey has got a little bit walkabout on the map. He has, and of course, at this point, Sanctuary's got a little bit of a D to his name. He's got the Berserker's Greaves, he's got some mana. So you can just rocket spam and try and keep Aphelios away from the tower, or at least not make sure he's not there for too long. As uh, Nat just being a little obnoxious oh, there. Yes, this is a lane that layer. exists. It is a lane that exists. And until I see these champions and team fights, I don't care too much. I think that's fair to say. But probably the moment I've said that, there's going to be some madness <laughs> in top lane. It, it happens literally every time. As Kaito is going to take a Mistral Bolt to the face, uh, be a little unhappy about that, and then walk back to clear up some minions. So, um, speaking of that mid lane, though, you can see a small advantage coming through for Kaito. Actually, fairly large for what you expect from this lane, but it's mirrored by the advantage, which is kind of expected in that top side. So, in terms of laning phase, kind of giving as good as it gets on both sides, but we do have that level 6 coming through from the Hecarim. was available, actually, uh, a little while ago, but yeah, uh, Swamp actually decided to power farm back up uh, to another level and then go towards the Herald. Yeah, and I think when you ca it came, when you saw the Ultimate Shadows was available, but a minute before the Herald fight, you think, yeah, early game, you're not going to have that on cool, on cool down in time or something like that. So I absolutely understand the decision making to not burn the Ultimates for a pick and nothing more. And that has sometimes been a criticism, I think, of teams that sort of in the middle of the packs in various leagues around the world where you, you'll use your abilities to get picks, but find oh, nothing else for yeah, it. Yeah, you don't translate like, it, right? And you're not even fighting at like the three item discrepancies. Mm. It's just, I can get a pick here is kind of the end of that call, <laughs> which is, you know, at the high end, not necessarily what you're looking for. No, but uh, Axis kind of taking it towards the positive. Uh, they have control of this game so far. They have the Jinx side of the matchups. So they're happy going uh, fairly late into this game. However, you can see that the first Merc Treads hasn't built up onto the side of CGA. The question is, of course, um, when are Axis going to find their first of time to actually pull the trigger? Because you're not actually getting split push pressure on a cannon over the sign right now. Sign is just tanking things up. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind if this is a hull breaker sign just to sit in a side lane for most of the game. I think that's a very valuable play pattern at this point, given how you want to remove Axis' ability to kind of push in and take... Um, Take multiple <laughs> angles of attack. Yes. I was like, words, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. But yes, I think that if we see a hull breaker coming through from that, I'm pretty happy with that too, you know? Yeah, I, I could see it. I think there's, there's definitely one of it. It's, it's not quite lethality, sign out of the mouse and the rest of it, but um, that's about, probably not a bad thing, actually, as I've got a little distracted change tracks so <laughs> in, in mid thought there. Um, let's check in on the gold a little bit here as well, as we're kind of edging towards when heralds and plates and stuff will be falling over the next couple minutes. Mm. So it is worth checking in before those crash to see what the state is it's about a thousand or so to access right now which is pretty much those two early kills you've talked about the discrepancies in solar lens kind of being somewhat traded back and forth and it's left us with a a slight goldie to access but a, the of course the dragon going over to cga makes that 
perhaps a relative. But there is the Herald Soul inventory, so look for that to go down uh, with the Dragon so. Contest potentially being set up. And CJ walking to River and Swamp also in the area. We can potentially see a counterweight coming down to trade plates around the place. So, uh, Swamp looking towards his bot lane, looking towards that priority. Uh, he doesn't have the same in the mid lane, which means that Kaito will have first swing at axes should mid laners come into the equation. Indeed, to see whether he can make something of it, of course, is a, is the other thing. There's Mega Bint still got some pots in inventory, so should be fine to do that. Is still playing with Fire Little Bit here. Not passive quite stacked up for Mega Bint, so you can dump Jash forwards on the, as the LeBlanc. It often is a game of uh, chicken there, trying to play that out as Swamp has decided to come down towards his spot side with the Dragon alive with the Herald inventory and passing on Vision. And that roaming down, of course, with the uh, uh, unstoppable Onslaught can be here very quickly. Oh no, it's the, it's the horrible game with the Onslaught of this Shadows, Unstoppable Onslaught. Uh, uh, Thelios Onslaught as well with the Severus. The, yeah. So there are three abilities oh, with Onslaught in the name. It is my Wait, nightmare. do we have anyone that's unstoppable, by the way? Uh, no, we don't. We have, well, unless you, you're you in those ultimates. In those that's ultimates. really sad. It would be great if we had like a, yeah, just like boy. a random Ragnarok in there from Kassin's uh, uh, attempted to Famous Olaf. Uh, it is going to be a dragon traded for plates. It's more gold onto Sangchu, but... On a mountain rift, when you're trying to fight front to back, when you're trying to survive out the first burst combo, if this does get up to a mountain soul, that seriously impacts Saxon's win condition. Credit to Nap here as well for managing to keep Fall 2 away from the tower, yet to get them even a single plate there. Despite the show. Of course, decimating smash means you can clear out waves really quite quickly. No, 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 no. It's decimating smash. You can only do it a tenth at a time. Because that's what decimation means. Yeah. It's killing so you only kill, you only, you only kill like one out of one in ten. That's it. You actually see. I'm two, always, what what happens yes, a minute you charge that ability. Q, you go, ah, and it's randomly across the map. Every one in ten yeah, minutes just randomly dies. Okay. Uh, so it, I, I think what it actually means is, you know, you, you're asking for like uh, you know, ten CS a minute. It's an average. It's just a one <laughs> CS a minute. Okay. <laughs> so just cast sound Q like a couple of times <laughs> a minute. That yeah. point, you're pretty fine. You're pretty safe. Support Scion. That's what it is. But you're just clearing up cannon minions every now and then. Not like this hashtag. But yeah, no, a decimation was a you Roman leap it, it after was, it your was, statements. It was... <laughs> Shut up, you. No. no, no, decimation was an old Roman legionary punishment. Indeed. If you ran from yeah. battle, they would um, take out every one in tenth, tenth uh, soldier. Yeah, was, uh, that's, that's, that's... Do with that information what you will. will. Google it's it. It's a history it's... lesson from a completely different region to the LJL. <laughs> yeah, well, what is our profession? History teachers, apparently. That's the one. Yep. Um, history of esports. We, we took Professor Oak's class from last time, right? Did, <laughs> uh, which was alongside sequel impressions, apparently, is what was required for the likes of J. Real Middlecock. Wait, do you reckon? Oak? Do you reckon we could? Do you reckon we could make an LGLOU Nuzlocke run where we could have like Professor Oak, but then because yes. everything's like random minion caster spawning, yes, it's like it's randomly oh, seeded. My days. Um, it's beginning. All right, I'm gonna name my rival Middlecock I'm, I'm something. So, like <laughs> considering I helped run this broadcast, I could literally set up a meeting to organize this. Wait, maybe uh, we could. Just maybe saying, we, I could wait, force this. Maybe we could be the start of Pokemon. You can yeah. choose between <laughs> all of that. Look, Namo, I choose oh, you. you. Oh, I'm gonna try and think about using a one-hit KO move. The likes of Onslaught of Shadows, but Swamp's been exhausted. Moonlight Vigil goes wide, but again, oh, of course, Moonlight oh. Vigil a hybrid. That was sick. Oh my gosh, that is such a big turnaround. And once again, Axes very telegraphed about the way they're playing this game. It, it feels like for me, Axes, when they come onto the Rift, they want to play for one lane, and if the enemy team doesn't let them do that, things get difficult. They found ways now, to, they found some ways earlier in the split to kind of just hammer th through an early advantage. Not the case in this oh, bot lane. Swamp comes things. down, mm. but this has become such about the 3v3 rather than the 2v2. So, you see, it's not necessarily the best one for like one on one weapons from hybrid, but gets the root to disengage Hecarim, stops him really uh, landing anything before he even gets, has to very quickly. Oh, that is disgusting. That is actually. Oh, he's so good. Th that is very high value. Uh, and let me tell you why that looks so cool. It's, you got the 20% crit chance, right? No! You got the 20% no, crit chance. No, that's what it was! Because a lot of the time, a fellow looks really underwhelming if he doesn't crit on the orc. Because when you hit someone with the ult with the fellow, you actually do a follow up auto attack. Mm. Um, with a, but that obviously relies on the amount of items you got. Gets it with the first amount of crit that he buys in this game. And Lethality, that is, crit, 20% chance. All of it hurts all comes quite through. a lot. Oh, that is so frustrating. Swamp's not quite at Onslaught of Shadows, so they might just try holding off on this second Herald from come back to life. But Cassin stepping up, keeping this leash. Swamp is still around, but with 
No ghost, no ultimate, as we just said. Not a lot of room to do it, Simon! Oh, come on! That. Oh, come on! Sam chooses that one! <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Someone's not... Oh, my God. Are they actually going to let him have it as well? Oh, they're, they're actually going to oh, oh, no. That's an aura of dread for CGS. Their hearts just sink after that. Oh, God. Hang on. Wait, wait. This uh, is like... Uh, the... Mission accomplished. <laughs> Battle next Lex times, lads. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him next time. <laughs> oh, that is just so what hard to see. I mean, and the thing is, that's really dangerous now for CGA because... You were starting to get to a point where you were happy with getting the gold onto your AD carry, kind of holding down Sanchu, who had gotten a lot of resources earlier on. You've now given both Heralds over. If this leads to a mid lane out of turret falling because your lane allocations aren't really set up for that, because you weren't really set up for a quick Herald reset, this could be really dangerous now. You could start losing control of areas of the map that you weren't planning on doing so, and that will give Axes another opportunity to get ahead. Yeah, and you can see Hybrid right now doing very well for himself. It's like about a just under a thousand gold ahead of Ser uh, of Sancho. He could have been or an S, and that would have been awful. That, that's not, it's not actually. Justice Seraphine. for the Bracken, sorry, what? Like, they removed that law because it was super weird. Um, it's just like, I'm not going to get into that rant right now. My, my issues with Riot's law writing is a little suspect. Anyway, moving Legendary. on. Legendary. Yeah, like, I, I feel like there's, but I'm, I'm, I'm due, like, at least one semi-rant about that every <laughs> months or so it's anyway contract, actually yeah. yeah pretty much it is hybrid oh, okay. just about gets out of that but we are still gonna get the herald summoned in mid lane over the wall goes kaito gets a bit of a chunk oh, oh come on. he can't keep getting away with it that is just disgusting swamping jump dump will be able to get out without burning the onslaught of shadows but even using the herald they still lose priority now because hybrid burns them all alive now i have to say i am not a believer in the mega infernum bomb anymore i think that way no no, no no not two in a row okay you are fine got our hopes up there observers but i'm not a believer in infernum ultimates i think that often early into the game they actually don't do that much but hybrid gets two for two on the crits by my eye that is game-changing rng actually at this point it stops the dragon fight it stops that bot fight in the first place the cga very much praising their ad carry for getting himself into the position to achieve that they're very much uh, also thanking the lucky stars too i know we mentioned Ashin earlier and obviously like yes. the, 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 uh, the old school you know like the old, the old school the new school going back for those you know le the level yeah. two cheetah recalls for all of the, the cult the rest of it but apparently um, we're also channeling one of the better teams out there because that was some serious RNG going <laughs> hybrids way. Yeah, that was that was the tangent. I'm sorry, Ashin. Well, all, all, you were doing that out there. They were expecting some actual LPRs. Yeah, no, all right, all right. Okay, so bring it back into a little bit of <laughs> rare normalcy. I, I refuse to believe it's not gonna it's gonna last more than a minute. No, but we have to do it to make the normal the the non normalcy seem a little bit more impactful. Okay, I see. The thing it. is, like, yeah, I'm with you. If you contrast, so if you if you ate like. I, I don't know. Your favorite food. That was less than a sentence of normalcy. Uh, <laughs> damn, you're right. Because <laughs> if you the things, if you if you eat your favorite food for forever, it becomes actually not special after a while. You gotta yeah. gotta hold, show some restraint. Don't go into the head of the glee of having like udon for every meal of the day. That's what I've learned. I wasn't expecting the alien down of this wisdom reference <laughs> here. <laughs> If you know that and where I'm getting that from, because I know where he got that info yeah, from. Yeah, shout if out you to Wandering In. Let's exactly. Go. If, if you've not read that, <laughs> I, I suggest you read that. It's a great, great ongoing series that but, is uh, very long. But right now, not wandering far from the mid lane are these AD carries. And one thing which I do bring up every time it's built is because I think it's a very interesting conversation is that we are going to see the rapid fire cannon second on Sanctu. Really helps you push out waves. Uh, it helps you get priority onto that area of the map, even when you are stood alone. And now the map is starting to come into a new balance. Absolutely is, and I also want to point out some very zero, zero, zero heavy score lines, namely that of both Toltu and Nap. And the okay. moment I say it, there's an attempt on to the cannon under his tier two, but there has been no teleport. There has been no team fights where they might get this cannon involved right now. And that makes me a little bit yeah. worried. Need to see something happening in the next few moments because they're already down soul point. And yes, there's been some serious RNG to give them a little bit of help with some of those crits, as we stated. But all the same, you've yeah. not been able to wield your combo correctly yet in this game. And, you know, I, I think that Nav has been okay in his individual play. Uh, sorry, Tolti has been fine in his individual players. So, so we see Tom not having to both go with that. But, um, but when Tolti has had to link up with his team, 
that's been where the difficulty has, has have started to come in. CGA, for all their faults, is historically a team that hasn't laned that well. Their early game can be a bit shaky. Sometimes they can be a bit directionless until they finally see five people on their screen. Like, right, this is how we team fight. They've come through this game. They've actually addressed a lot of those worries. Their laning phase is more than fine this game. Heck, look at their lanes right now. They've got leads in every single one besides, you know, well, I mean, um, top is even. I count that as a lead against a cannon. Uh, and yeah, CGA very much being Ooh. stable right now. That's another good Gale Force from Hybrid. He's been on point with those all game so far. Avoids an attempt to engage there and gets out with, honestly, a summoner advantage. Does get the flash out of dice. He, oh yes, it has the hex flash, so not feeling as bad about losing that on the Nautilus, but it's also going to cost them pressure in mid lane. It costs them a mid lane tier one and Axe has yet to get a single turret even in this game. Now, we talked quite early into the game about win conditions and how things would kind of change in regards to how far ahead Axe's dive combo would get. We're saying, okay, well, at what point does a multi-man combo just delete CJ? Well, we've not really seen that so far, and we've not seen any threat onto the Aphelios. I think these are two very concerning things now for Axe's. Uh, the last time I cast him was against V3. That was a much lower tier opposition, and they were fairly confident in that game at playing through their win conditions, but they're struggling to find anything similar here. And Sangchu gets it, but now he gets to get it for a teleport. Let's, Let's see what Toast around. Actually, this might just work. They've got the minion to work with. Cassin's bear the ultimate, but the in ult. goes the Shadow Surge. Chambered taken so low here. Snap into the backside as well. Cassin finally dies to Swamp, and Sangchu's trying to stay alive. Flashes out of the decimating smash, and Nap is now in a difficult position as well. Oh, no, oh, again! Angel! Inferno for the third time in a row strikes home. Three strikes, you're out, Sangju. Lightning strikes twice, the Infernum strikes three times, and Hybrid again, making me a believer in the mid game of this champion. Remember, CGA chose this side of the matchup. They chose it after that first pick. Hecarim, they said, no, we don't want the Jinx. We believe in Hybrid's Aphelios, and they are being paid off for that decision so strongly. This fight starts with Sangju very much diving deep, well not diving, but staying over long for that mid lane out of turret. We know it's an important objective, they saw the time before it, but having your AD carry on such low HP stops you from running forward into a point where you can really threaten a lot of this team fight. It's actually lucky to survive the very start of this, because Nap of course uh, comes in through the back end of that fight, finds a way to engage with that Scion, but this is the story of the fight. It's another ultimate, it's a four man Moonlight Vigil. Dragon about to be started, and this will be sold for CGA. Can Axis find the fight? Can they find a flip? Something to prevent this going over. It's a Re soul point already, 23 minutes. HP bars are pretty low, and Megamin off vision here. He's got Shadow Surge, could look for a back and engage. Oh, sort of Shadow's in, will secure the Dragon. Shadow Surge comes out as well, oh. and they get Hybrid. He's done, but that will be Swamp being traded out now as well as Megamin doing his best to finish up some kills. Double kill for triple. Satchel, make it a triple. That's a cannon, Maelstrom that slices them all. Inclement weather brings them all down a lightning will strike four times but this time it's for axis let's go back to that question at what point are cga safe from the aoe combos of axis turns out not just yet they go boldly towards that dragon they go towards the objective and are punished so heavily for stacking into this combo for the first time this game axis have had to wait patiently they had to take a couple of l's in the mid game skirmishes but Megaman finds an angle, gets Boom. in for the, the huge CC on the back line. And as much as you can devour up, you already carry a ton cooldown at this point. See it ticking down in that corner. And Sanctu is completely untouched in the back end. That mops up the fight. And then, what, then you can just see Taltus here manages to get both clones of LeBlanc. There will be no tricky business for that one. And the lightning catches that. And Pikachu chooses you. Been over there, Pokemon references already in this game, and looking a little bit more like Dark Souls right now. It's a bloodbath on the rift. We're gonna go on like the 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 the, the Nuzlocke LJ L charge. Doesn't this mean that at this point we need to like change out all the players <laughs> every time they die? You just switch out hot seat. That would probably be quite a fun um, like <laughs> like all star. That would yeah, be yeah, that I... would be. You know what? That'd be fantastic. The problem is if then you just get randomly solo killed. Just like oh, and I get to play the rest of the game. Yes, exactly. But then you just got to deal with it. <laughs> I would do that. I would totally do that. You know, next time uh, there's an event, the ability to do like a PC game or a PC gaming event or a uh, at a cafe or an mm -hmm. LAN event. We are, we're trying that. that put that, put that on the list. 
that would be quite good fun. All right, keep that in mind. But Axes with the big play when they needed it most, get themselves a Baron as well. Managed to get those turrets they failed to get earlier. Remember, they punished, they, well, they took, uh, they, they used a lot of resources to get the mid lane out of turret. And a one for one that was all the madness it was that started off a lot of this. <laughs> exactly that. But now they've got a Jinx with a rapid fire and an infinity edge as well as that Kraken Slayer who can start shoving in. You've got Tol 2 backed up by these Baron empowered minions shoving in the top side. And I think the 4 1 is the right choice here considering potential damage onto access that CGA could bring to bear should they wish to go in. And as much as the Holdbreaker helps in the individual matchup between the Simon and the Cannon, doesn't have a Baron buff. Uh, of course, the um, boarding party passive of the Holdbreaker item means that your Cannon minions do get that much more tanky, but it's not enough to wave clear out just yet. CGA is stuck under both of their pushed lane turrets. Uh, and this is, again, the economy of the first Baron that uh, you tend to get in the games. Actually, something which Rudely talks a lot, I, I credit it to him. The economy Baron allows you to get a game-breaking advantage, but rarely gets you, allows you to finish the game at that point. And you can see it in the gold scores. It was about 3,000 gold when we came to live. It's extended more to about four at this point. And you can see the Baron power play in the top right corner. It is that 4K mark from just behind now to That's significantly pretty good economy, Baron. <laughs> exactly, you take that economy, Baron. Not quite CSGO, of course, but I think the point still stands. No, I don't think CJ have the option of ECOing. Maybe maybe that's what it is when you don't contest for an objective. Maybe that's that, it. That, that basically, it's, Honestly, I think that's that the equivalent. That's probably there it. There you go. Huh. I hadn't thought of that parallel before. You know what? That's quite interesting. There you go. You can We can ruminate on that as we go. Well, it does seem like Hybrid and uh, Sanctuary oh. are playing tactical shooters from the way that this game's been going. They're going to get a recall off in the bush below the blue buff as well there as well. So no chance of catching how to pass in but it will lead to a loss of control of the blue side jungle. At least Kaito got blue buff, which should help keep yep. his mana available and topped up prior to this next dragon that's coming up in under a minute. And how heartbreaking would it be for CJ to lose oh, Kaito. this game against the 3 and 9 oh, Axis? Boy. Kaito going to get devastatingly charged, He's but fine. actually less damage than I was anticipating no. as I saw a Hecarim running yes, into your lane. There's no Triforce or something. I just looked at the but... items. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But either it. way, the fact that Kaito has to put himself into those positions to try and push up, try and test is dangerous. And again, this is against Axis. The three and nine. This is not a team that we expected. High levels of competition coming out of into this part of the split after that smite top meta had been removed forcibly from the, the pro scene. The CGA is still finding themselves in a very difficult situation. They're going to have to dig deep. They're going to have to find some of that team fighting magic that we know that Nap and Kassin had much of last year. But they kind of have to do this right down the gullet of axes. They're going to have to uh, walk into enemy warded territory and potentially open themselves up for flanks. Can CGA come back in this game? They're in a difficult position right now. Megamin is on one flank, Tol 2 on the other. It's off vision right now, but starting up. The autos will reveal himself as Dice. He goes no! in. Oh, no! Cassin gets what he came for. But what about the fight afterwards? He will surely fall. But what about the rest of the team? Also, the shadows over the wall will maybe allow Kaido to go down. He's going to hop forward, throw down a sigil of malice. Moonlight Vigil finally goes wide for once in this game. Shadow Surge is hit, but it's only really on to Nap. Not the best target. Sanctuary gets a hold of Nemo. He will still oh. fall down potentially afterwards, but still running around. Nap not quite dead. Does now fall. Megamin, Swamp, and Sangchu are the three remaining members of Axis, but it's only Hybrid that survives the onslaught. Oh, miracle steal from Kasim, though. They get the objective, but they lose the fight. So how the hell did this end up happening in? It's just the flash forward. It's the smite at the same time. Kasim, serious, serious hero play for the side of Crest Gaming Axe. However... Their front line is taken down very, very easily after that point. Sanctuary is able to walk inside the Crescent Guard and not really pay much heed to that Jin Zhao inside of it with no basic cooldowns remaining. And then you have the resets coming through. You get the excited. And Sanctuary has the damage. It's so huge. Items. Doesn't even have the Gale Force, the Kraken Slayer, remember. If you get to stand and fire this Jinx, there's almost no fight which you win, even with Hybrid pulling off some big plays of his own. And now at 8, 1, and 3 with 4 items. Yes, you got the Man of Salt, and that's great for stopping the initial burst. But if it ends up in an extended fight, that Jinx will still tear through you. Of course, if you have got the likes of a Tarp Gang, you have got a 2 item. Brand new in second, by the way, on ah. the Jin Zhao, who will be making more use out of those Mountain Soul stats than he might have done otherwise. And of course, there is a Scion, who is a notorious tank. 
Notorious Tank, but how tanky can anyone be against an 8-kill Jinx? Almost full items, just waiting for that stopwatch to be upgraded or, or to be sold for another defensive option. Woo! And that is a 10k team fight. Sangshu, as much as we praise hybrid a lot in this split, Sangshu is also on the list of newcomers to the league, which we had our eyes on and were firmly glued to our screen. Sangshu, again, holding up the banner for axes and stellar AD carries from this season and the last. Like in any other team fight, Hybrid's 4K team fight would have been a, would have a really been great team. Exactly, would have been a fantastic team fight. That's <laughs> just thank you. I mean, in fairness, a lot of that is him killing off both Cassid, Nap, and, ne and Nemo, who are all massive With the health tanks. On top of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's a lot of health to chug through. So there's a little bit of inflation going on, but even say, so, that is not what you wanted to see. Oh, look, it's the emotional experience of being a CGA fan. Yet again. Turns out every season it happens oh. the same way. The LJL coaster is more than just a podcast thumbnail, guys. This this right here, this gold graph, is is the thumbnail. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Blizzcrown Stan, for your hard work. Uh, see you again in another S twist of fate, potentially. Space <laughs> cow. See you, out, see you around Space Cow Boy. Wait, I was going to try and find a way of saying, like, 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 hook champion without it being slightly inappropriate sounding so we'll move away from that it's, it's, yeah you can't really say see you around space hooker exactly it's just like exactly that was my problem and you wouldn't said it anyway i spent so long avoiding it we're gonna make our own brown broadcast with black chunk <laughs> space <laughs> hookers <laughs> okay, okay forget the gold graphs and the blitzcrank <laughs> Worked so much. Trouble. Mid priority <laughs> being fought over yet again. Gold leads in the side of axes. Still, they are continually pushing up the ante. They're building up their items, but they're against the neutral objective lead of CGA Hybrid, taking down an entire structure of that mid lane in a turret. And they can they claim the territory in Axis side of the jungle. And Axis not in position to defend this uh, defend this push. That's what they paid for, I suppose, by going for the vision control. They don't lose the inhibitor tower. They do lose that tier two, which is a small win for CGA, but a necessary one right now because they are significant amounts of gold behind right now. 5,000 at this point of the game, still a big deal. And of course, a lot of that is on the Jinx. That is your problem. It's not like it's spread evenly among the players. I know that's on the eight kills or Jinx. <laughs> but if there's any one champion in the entire game right now that you want kills onto, it's Jinx. Jinx is definitely yes, that. I'll completely agree too. Uh, and with their, both their summoners available, with the stopwatch to CGA are Mega Megamen. They're running out of options, and this tanky front line is doing enough for now. Teleport option behind here, CG as well, just on the bottom left, underneath the uh, the, the Scion picture board. I'm trying to say the stat page, stat block. <laughs> there we go. That could be a better way of phrasing it. There you go, just on the Now, I wonder whether there might have been an option for a TP in for someone like Nat instead. It will just be some posturing that leads to very little at this point. Control ward still oh. remains though for CGA. It does. And speaking of that posturing, the person that really has options for CGA, at least, is the LeBlanc. Can Kaito is a player that you know came in late into CGA last season, came in to replace um to replace Nation, who was role swapping around because there was illness in the team. And he did okay. He had some okay mm. Zoe performances, went towards the LeBlanc as well, but has had some. LGL experience, went into playoffs and was sadly dealt a 0-3 loss in that first series that he was put into. But he's really struggling. Oh, Dicey misses. That could be point money, but Nemo still going to be in a problematic position because there's an onslaught of shadow still available. Swamp has to go golden. Such a massive shield after the various But there's Megaman to the backside. Shadow Judge there alongside the Maelstrom. Who needs a hole breaker when you can capsize ships like that? Hit to the high seas and swapped out, washed out by Maelstrom and horses. It's a wave of assaults. It's a wave of engages. Swamp blows the devour. Solo laners pick up the pieces of the team fight. It's an elder fight. It's gone late. Kassin is alive. He's done one miracle steal and is off a of vision. It could happen again. It Just happen on again. again. Pull it out. Don't let it happen. They're now trying to roam around. But he's still going to now finally be on vision. They know where he is. He needs to back away. He can't go for the steal anymore. No flash. No ultimate. No hope. Axes with the engage options make it work megamin finds hybrid uh, alongside toll two as well and i have to say praising both of those solar linens because they're coordinating they're finding the right targets 
together. And again, I'm seriously wanting you to keep your eyes on how the engage of Axis is spread out. It's not all layered on top of a Devour. And yes, you do have Nap buying a lot of time, but Tol 2 flashes right oh. in. Megaman's done the same. But it's it's only because the entire team, the jungle support, blew the defensive options so the solo laners could find that angle. Axes, they find themselves a team fight against a team that has so famously done that before. And we know what these players can do from early weeks. Sangchu having another one of those games. Swamp has been leading the charge. And credit to the solo laners as well, turning up when necessary in these massive objective fights. Hats off to Megaman, hats off to Tol2. They found yet another way onto hybrid. Have, but they need to find a way onto the Nexus at some point. Because yes. as much as we've seen all of these team fights go in Axe's favor, when you have so much damage onto an Aphelios too, when you have the ability to just instantly delete people if you make a single mistake, if you overstep into an Inferno at this point, you think it's bad at one item, see what happens when you crit with these items. Uh, and and as much as CJ have been on the back end of the bad team fights, one mistake could be the story of this game from this point. I've got to call it out as well. I didn't really get chance before that last one. It was a bloodthirster for a hybrid. There is no Lord Dominic's regards, not a lot of armor pen here. And I understand you're trying to stay alive against all of the people trying to tear your face off. And honestly, after that last fight, the last couple of fights, you can't blame him, but it does prove a bit problematic when things like the Zonyas, things like that Hecarim who built full tank, things like the Nautilus now starting to get towards a few more items. It makes his life even more difficult. And I wonder whether at some point that collector needs to be switched out. Hey, okay, well, looking to collect their dues, another engage. Onto the Shadows does get a lot, but it does force CGA away from their next set. So inhibitor tower, not quite that far in yet. But the inhibitor falls first of the game. They rotate over to their second wave. Kindly set up for them earlier, Blue Peter style. They'll get another inhibitor down the line as well. So, wave not available in the top side. And with the Baron buff and uh, sorry, the Elder falling off just now, Axe is going to move away from the base of CGA. Look to collect that last wave, use the last of their Baron buff, even without the, uh, the Mega Combat buff. See if they can put CGA in the worst possible scenario. About a minute left on the Baron buff, so they'll have a wave, I think two waves. Probably just about with this Baron. And of course, at that point, Super Minions will be crashing in as well in about 30 seconds or so. So this is probably a little bit of time to at least keep CGA bottled up here and prevent them from even having a chance of recuperating, rebalancing after the, the hammer blow that Axis have landed over the next last couple of minutes. So kites up. Not even on three hours. Oh, oh no. no. I appreciate it, but that, that is a dead, dead LeBlanc. There's no Banshee's Veil. There's no way of staying alive if you get caught by an Everfrost like that. It is the cold embrace of death that he comes into. And now with the additional person down, yes, you've got a Mountain Soul, but what is a mountain beneath the crushing weight of competence here from Axis in this late game? And, and seriously, they sniffed out the flank. Kaito gets in there for like half a second, oh, immediately oh, shut down. Oh. I thought there was a teleport behind. No, it's just a type of the minions to keep it alive, and that'll allow them to get the last Nexus. Sorry, Nexus inhibitor. Turret, I've said that a couple times now, but the point still stands. It's the Nexus now under siege. Instead, Snap is going to try and do his best, but his hybrid is flashing away, staying alive as the old sort of shadows was there. Slicing Maelstrom coming through as well. One final Nexus turret remaining. Still trying to stay alive, but it's already a triple for Sangchu. He's looking for even more. This might even be a pentacle if he can get away. They don't give him that. They'll just clear up the game and Axis pick up a much needed fourth win in the, in the LJL. Welcome to being a fan of CGA. It happens all the time. Join the club. We've had so many heartbreaks with this team, but... Let's focus on the positives of this because this is Axis picking up their fourth win. Only their fourth win for this entire split. The team which has struggled so much historically. They have been a bottom end of the table team last summer. They had that bright spark. They ended up being towards the top of the table for one of the first times we'd ever seen of them. But seriously important win for them. Massive win. CGA back to the drawing board there. Despite some good early turnarounds. Despite some very lucky crits on Infernum Ultimate. It is the massive Wombo combo from Axis that comes out on top. We're going to cut to a quick break when we come back. Mass One will be joining us to break down that game and help us think about what's to come today. Don't you go anywhere. Wait, no, 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 no.
one in. Oh, welcome, welcome everybody back to the Desmas one. Initialize and Nymera, gentlemen. Axis with an upset. Oh, is this actually the triple round robin starting to accelerate towards us? Nymera, I'm coming first to you because we've never had a triple round robin, the three of us, before. This is not us three, time. no. And so... <laughs> this feels like a glow up moment. Yeah, because we started in spring 2020. So that was mm. when the double round robin came back for the first time, the best one format. And we talked about this a lot on, on the podcasts uh, and stuff like that. And so actually, yeah, this, this format is quite, it's forgiving to teams that need to develop and need to discover a style and need to kind of iterate on things. Mm. Now, Axis are looking to fight for that last playoff spot, realistically. Being able to come back and show a game like this, particularly when you've got Hawks playing next against DFM, just to get a leg up on them, that extra mm. one win up, is actually really important. This triple round robin, I think it is starting to show some real rewards for the teams which are innovating and adapting. And innovating and adapting. That was Swamp's jungle parving initialize. He was all about those timings and we saw the level four immediately there and punishing the side of Chris Gaming X. Yeah, couldn't quite get the wave to crash when they wanted it, I think, for hybrids <laughs> and crew. And they kind of got killed off for it. Unfortunately, of course, for X in the early game, the two attempts afterwards, Cassim was there and it did get ready. Mm. And there was a little lack of innovation at that point afterwards, where actually for a while there, CGL felt like they were the ones who had firm come out of that game. So point, and a lot of that was off, turning around some of those attempt spot side that didn't quite work. And I mean... Let's be real, for the first like 10, 15 minutes of that game, Nymera, CJ were just accruing all of the neutral objectives. They got most of the dragons and, and the heralds never really amounted to much for Axis. They got some gold, mm. but it, it was kind of like, that was it really. I, I do think that when you saw that second herald steal that, come in though, it true. just, it took a bit of momentum out of CJ because mm. what you really want to use that second herald to do is crush their mid out of turret. As we saw, that took a lot longer to get for CJ at that point. And then at that point, they actually took two turrets right on the fly. So they got some good gold out of it. But the fact that Axis could stay within reach and then find ways to get the big team fights because they stayed in reach was very, very important, especially when we saw kind of gold being traded back and forth in the bot lane because of, and of course that one fight in the mid lane too, when the AD carries were yes. starting to shift gold leads and stuff. The fact that Axis could stay within arm's reach, very important. And I mean, I've got to take it over to the mid lane matchup because it's such an interesting spot because I went into the history books, only very recent history mm. as well. Um, Kaito versus Megamin, that was actually our spring first round uh, where Axis 3 0'd Chris Gaming yeah. Act. And no. I've got to come to you guys because I feel like Megamin's got the read. So, so the thing is, we kind of half told that story in game. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Kaito came in with 0-3 in the first round of playoffs. And that's kind of the end of where it sits in my mind because it wasn't that impactful of a matchup. I forgot that Axis were on the other side of that. Yeah. Mm. And th there's some truth to what you're saying. And like, while the laning phase Crazy, was, he does that sometimes. You know, like, <laughs> you saw some slight leads for the... Mega mind. You saw her do quite well there. You know, got about 10 CS. I'm just going to, you know, ignore him a minute. And Please as they were continuing, yeah, like... Those Please continue. Not making money. Okay. Um, yeah, but but actually, once the team fights rolled round, Mega Min's trigger discipline was so key. In fact, mm. honestly, uh, Axe's trigger discipline in, in general was really key. We called it out in game that we saw they spaced out their options to engage to try and force out the target about, and then went all in to kill off Hybrid, who had been their problem. And a lot of that is on Mega Min finding his space on Vision, landing the Shadow Surges, and getting on top of that AD carry when the Devour was there. Yeah, how much has this player developed since a year ago? Serious glow up. Like, night and day different, and is stepping up into a spot where he really needed to, because there's no longer Honey or um, uh, Hoglet. So uh, someone's got to be that veteran. I guess Mega Min's filling those shoes, gentlemen! Huge, huge moment happened because Hybrid has been that bot lane player, and I really do want to take it back to kind of the team fights that really established this. Hybrid was obviously clearly a point of power for Chris Gaming Act, but the side of Axis just seemed to always have the play around difference when it came to those team fights. I'm thinking that first team fight around Dragon number four being a critical one, and really Axis never dropped the ball since then. I mean, there was no threat onto the Jinx. Um, nope. This is what you get with Jinx. If you don't shut her down in a team fight, then it doesn't... It, a lot of the time, it just takes one mistake against the Jinx. So if what you're, you're saying is enabling fight, her early was a really bad thing for the side of CGA. 
Very much so. As mm. soon as as soon as Jinx gets to a point where she's on two three items, if she gets ahead of the curve as she did mm. in this game as well, with um with uh, uh you know Sangchi piloting that champion so well, um you have to kill the Jinx early into the fight. And what we saw in terms of like the Dragon Seal, which got the got the soul for uh, CJ, it's all well and good seeing seeing that. But I mean, you have to blow a flash. You have to blow your ultimate very early. So your front line is not doing optimal work during, against that too. It was. The game the, we've played so many games with Jinx in it now. This should be quite elementary. And CJ, they, they fail the test. Yeah, that, that, that's a game where Sang Chu's damage graph is going to be a juicy one. Believe it or not, ten k damage in like that Elder Dragon fight or something, wasn't yeah. it? It was that four. It was, it was, it was that fourth dragon fight. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that, that it was actually that fourth dragon fight, and then yeah. obviously the rest of that Axis were able to um, not capitulate. They they uh, they actually kept it all together. Didn't fall apart. Which honestly, gentlemen, before last question to you both, I thought they'd blow up. I seriously yeah, thought Axis would blow up. When Why do you think the two, they didn't? When they flubbed the two ganks in bot lane, I was like, whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that they had a conversation which they just understood how to play. And that's something which, of course, we saw them trying to do the smite top. Had a couple of games off where they tried to play the solo carry top laners, but I think this looks like a more cohesive team in general for Axis. Mm. They understood what just, they wanted yeah, to play around. I just really liked their draft. I thought it was a really good draft. Yeah, I me they too. Could, like, lots, lots of ways to make hybrids life hell while allowing Sanju to get excited and run things over. Talk Axis played meta and they won? Crazy. We'll have to see if they continue to do that, ladies and gentlemen, but... We're going to go over to a short little break before we come back with Detonation Focus Me looking to probably lick some wounds and regain their streak once again, facing off against the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming. Don't 